free. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, thought we'd do a video uh, this evening, Friday, 7pm. I'm joined by uh, Chris from St. Helens, is it Chris? Good, uh, yeah, St. Helens well, ADOT, but yeah, St. Helens. Uh, yeah. How are you doing Chris, are you alright mate? What on yourself mate? Yeah, I'm alright, I'm alright, I'm plodding on. Shouldn't be stopping in on a Friday night though, should I? Yeah, 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 right. Well, I'm exactly the same, mate. Usually I'm working, usually I work nights, but I've literally been on days all week. I've been training in work, so literally it's the first Friday night I've had off in nine months. Yeah, yeah. So happy good. days, man. Good. Happy uh, days. What would you like to talk about, Chris, then? A um, few questions, probably the first one. Um, Usek versus Joyce for the interim. Title. I think that's a good fight. Brilliant. I think it, if they make that fight, if if they make it, let me tell you. Yeah, if, no, no, no. Don't forget, Usyk's got a fight left with. Oh, sorry, sorry. Joyce has got Joyce a fight left with Frank, hasn't he? Yeah. On his deal, and and Usyk's with Eddie Earn. So if they make it for interim, I think that's good. If they do that for interim, it looks like soon as Joshua and Fury have fought, if they fight. The belt will be vacated the next day and they will be upgraded. Yeah. So technically it's a world title fight. We both agree yeah. on that, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you can see how they're trying to do it, but could you imagine if we started doing things like that in Champions League or Europa League? Correct. Uh, boxing's yeah. wild, wild west, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No all's bad. Everyone makes their own fucking rules up as they go yeah. Sorry, I'm swearing parking. That's no, we're all right. We don't worry about it. We're not going to get our one pound forty now for the video because I'm not paying fifteen quid to have it edited out. It's <laughs> nah, nah, like that. It's right. Like, <laughs> yeah, but we, we we don't earn no anyway. It's a non-profit channel. It's the size of my mouth. Jesus, it, it's a good job I'm not on peace work. My family to starve, wouldn't they? <laughs> I've been driving around in an old Talbot Solero or an Austin Allegro. Oh, yeah, fucking. But. Uh, but yeah, so you know, I think that's a good fight. But I think that it's a more intriguing fight, Derek Chisora against Joe Parker. What do you think to that, Chris? Right, I didn't even know that. Right, that that was actually in the thing you're being made. But yeah, yeah great fight. The, the, yeah, the whisper is that that's like more or less a done deal. Like yeah, so yeah, well, right. You can say what you want about Tizora, but listen, I've always been a fan of Tizora because he always gives his heart and soul. Listen, whether he gets levered or wins, like he's always in decent fights. So, yeah, right. Yeah. I wouldn't say that I'd pay for it on pay-per-view because I probably wouldn't, but, yeah, good fight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good fight, but the the septics, I'm a septic, you know, 10, <laughs> ten, losses, ten losses, should it yeah. be pay-per-view? Ten losses and there's Parker no, there. Ten. Uh, you know, he, he's from, well, I mean, if we we're, we're live in a politically correct world, right? Chisora, Zimbabwe, other ones, New Zealand. It, it shouldn't be pay-per-view anyway, but the fact that Chisora's got losses, Parker's had lot. he's got 10 losses, he's got two losses. There's no yeah. belt on line yet again for a Chisora fight. How can they charge pay-per-view that? Like, you know, if, 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 if they do bring it out on pay-per-view, and I think they will because Parker won't come over for nothing less. And Chisora's running around with his mouthpiece, David A saying, well, we're pay-per-view. Well, David A saying that, isn't he? Amongst the chosen few. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, but though, the only reason they put it on pay-per-view because they know people are going to buy it. So yeah, if people are yeah. going to buy it, then why, then why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's a, it, yeah, it, it's a catch-22 situation, isn't it? You know what I mean? If, yeah. you know you can, if you know you can make money doing something, of course you're fucking going to do it. You know what I mean? It's common sense to do it. Personally, I wouldn't pay for it, but yeah, it's still a great fight. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's one of them things, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. Um, but though, getting back to the Usk um, Joyce interim title fight, though, but what happens if Joshua and Fury don't fight? And then, right, where does Us where does Usek go then? Uh, I don't really know, to be honest. If they don't fight, he he's doing the right thing fighting Joe Joyce, isn't he? Because it'll be for full belt, won't it? Yeah, but though, right, why take a risk fighting Joe, jo uh, Joe Joyce? Because Joe Joyce is no muggery, you know what I mean? There's a very good chance that he could get fucking chinned. Yeah, but they might, like I've just said to you earlier, they might have said to him, look, fight Joe Joyce for world title. It's technically interim, but yeah. if they let yeah, the big, the two fight for it, 
they're going to they'll agree in, in writing that they're going to vacate on the yeah. Sunday the day after they fought. So it wouldn't really matter, really, would it? Joy uh, Usek could look at it like. I've beat Joyce once because he beat him in that tournament yeah. when I went yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll beat him again because I've got better movement. And it's an easier yeah. fight with Joyce than Joshua or Fury. They might look at it like that. I don't know. It's yeah. not in all yeah. six said, am I? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I yeah. think it's probably easier fight to add it to add it three of a minute. Yeah, yeah, but though, right, right, I still think it's like a, like a pretty big risk. And personally, if I was him, though, I'd, I'd have a straight for big guns. Yeah, but he's a fighting man, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, people yeah. People that no pussy foots about and dodges yeah, yeah. challenges. Because there's a lot of people in boxing. You call people out, but they don't fight. Usyk's bought everybody at Cruiserweight and he wants to test himself. So I always give him respect, Usyk. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's a great fighter. Definitely. Brilliant, Alpha brilliant. Olympic gold medalist. I mean, he's everybody's nightmare, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Modern great. Yeah, right. Next question, moving on. Uh, Josh Warrington and Kid Galahad, right? What do you think's happened there? Why, uh, why, why do you think he's vacated? I know you probably don't want to go over it, but yeah, I know. I'm gonna. I was just about to say I've been over it all, all this week. Yeah. I'm gonna just say, look at it like this. It's an hard fight for Josh, right? And it's a messy fight, isn't it? Yeah. Nobody's. When, I don't mean to hammer Galahad, right? Because technically, I think he's, I think he's up there with best in the country. He, technically, he's brilliant. Uh, He's, he's technically good, isn't he? Right? But he stays out yeah. range, doesn't he? It's not an exciting style, is it? He's boring as fuck. He's not there to... He, when he when he fought Josh Whale, Josh tried to force him to have a tear-up and that, and he just stayed out range, and he, he made it he made it a crap fight. And that leaves... It's that sort of style that I don't like. But technically, he's very, very good. He's very well drilled. He, he's, he's obviously, he obviously lives the life, doesn't he? So we have to give him credit because he's lived the boxer's life all his life, hasn't he? Definitely, yeah, mate. He lives, yeah, he he lives the gym rat. Right? He's a gym rat. Right? And yeah. so we have to give him credit for that. But I don't like his style. And I don't like how he conducts himself. I mean, who am I to say that anyway? Outside the outside <laughs> boxer. Oh, my oh, I don't know how he conducts himself. I mean, kettle cold <laughs> hot black, isn't it? But the yeah. point I want to make is that he's got the tools to beat anybody on his day right. in yeah. a stinker. Because when have you ever yeah. seen him in a whoa, we need to get on for this fight? Yeah, I haven't seen it, have you? Well, yeah, right. The one fight that I did think that he was like that was against Jazz. Uh, Jazza Dickens, but first though, didn't time. positive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but though, didn't he te uh, test positive for fucking incredible oak news? Incredible oak, though. I, I think he did. I think he did that. Well, that after the fight. Yeah. I don't, I don't know when about see, it were tested, but he got a band in and they got the band yeah. reduced in on appeal and that. So he's yeah. he's moved on from that. I don't agree with any of that. You know, if they've been banned, I, I just think this guy might like rubbish. But I think everybody deserves a second chance. I know. Yeah. I've had enough chances in my life, but I know. Yeah, but Galahad's, uh he's he can be a surgeon, him. You know, if he had that little bit of yeah, some, some a bit yeah. of yeah. the devil in him. Yeah, right. If he had a little bit of Amir Khan in him, then yeah. Oh yeah. my God! If he had a bit of Amir Khan in him, he, he'd yeah. be beatable because he's got everything. He's got more to his game than Amir had. Yeah, yeah, he's got no a good doubt. Chin as well, he's got a good chin as well. He don't get eight, does he? No, never. Best chins are them that don't get it. Why have you chin tested if you can get it so you don't get it? Correct. I think he's technically really, really, really good, but the style, oh, and TV don't want the style, because if they did, Eddie Earn would have bid on the purse bid, wouldn't he? Correct. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. but though that, though, the fact that Eddie Earn didn't even put a bid in and the fact the winning bid was something like $50,000. Fifty that which is 37000 for champion, 12500 for... Mandatory, and that's your lot. And because it's only one bid, they win it. I mean, of course, he's going to vacate when they're hearing about bids like that, aren't they? But what Josh Warrington needs to be sat down thinking about when he's in bed at night and he can't sleep, he'll be thinking, Well, Eddie earns my promoter, and he didn't even bid for me, he didn't yeah. go out to bat for me. Why is that? Because he's an exciting fighter, Josh. Because there's yeah. no crowds, is there? And they've called the mandatory, and there's a date on it, and there's no crowds at the moment. So Eddie earns made a business decision over uh, uh, looking after his fighter. But what happened to my fighters are my family? <laughs> my fighters are my family, Coops. Well, obviously, they're not, are they? Because he didn't bid, did he? If he'd have bid, I'd have gone fair enough. I mean, look at it like this, right? Dennis Hobson, 
he outbid Golden Boy for a fight with, with one of his, his fighters a few years ago. Outbid Golden, I think it was Stewie Hall and Randy Caballero. I might have it wrong. Did, did they fight them two, yeah? Um, Stuart Hall, Randy Caballero, right. Did they uh, fight? Uh, Dennis yeah. won the purse bid on the fight anyway. Outbid right. Golden Boy, Sheffield Scrap Metal dealer. So he backed his man, didn't he? Right, yeah, yeah. he backed his man. You know, I don't see Dennis now. He backed his man. Eddie Earn didn't back his man. There's a difference. Dennis will have a gamble. Eddie Earn will play accountant. Yeah. That's what you're dealing with. You see what yeah. I'm coming from? Yeah, right. So. He's like all, all about the bottom line, though, isn't he, Eddie Earn? You know what I mean? Well, like, yeah, because they run it as a business, don't they? The, the, the yeah. money mad. The yeah. money mad, but boxing don't work like that. Sometimes you've got to roll the dice. Frank Warren rolled the dice, didn't he, with the bar and Joyce and Yard yeah. and Arthur. When did he roll dice this year? All yeah, I'm yeah. seeing is him feeding kids to Canelo. Yeah. yeah, and then cleaning up on his 30%. Well, whatever he gets, yeah, he's not bothered, is he? He's sat in crowding. He's not getting punched, is he? He's probably yeah. getting as much as fighters, so why should he care? Mm. But that's how I look at it anyway. I mean, I know it's pretty sceptical and I'm a bit of a cynic, but... No, 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 right, well... My take is on it that they've all got their heads together, Warrington and Earn, right, and said, listen, you uh, don't want to fight him. Let them two fight for the vacant belt, and then you've then got a ready-made challenger ready and waiting for when the crowds do come back, and then they'll work it that way. Yeah, right. there is that possibility as well. That did go through my mind as well, that he could, could sit it out. But why would Warrington want to fight Gallagher second time? Because first fight... Stunk out the city of Leeds. Stunk yeah, yeah, yeah. It out, mate. Stunk it yeah. out. They had to go around with fumigators around the stadium, mate. You were that smelly. Sh shocking. You know I mean, people were way. booing, mate, in the crowd, booing. So why would people want to go watch that garbage again? No, right, w right. It, w it weren't as bad as Johnny Nelson against Carlos de Leon. No, it, it wasn't as bad as that. When they smuggled Johnny out under a blanket like Peter Sutcliffe. <laughs> Last person who got smuggled out of Sheffield like that was Peter Sutcliffe when they caught him. He was Yorkshire Ripper. He was arrested in Sheffield. There's only a blanket out twice in Sheffield. Peter Sutcliffe and Johnny Nelson. You think I'm joking, <laughs> mate? Johnny, you know that's true, don't you, Johnny? You stunk arena out. Yeah, right. All oh, right. That bleeding fight, though, the only thing it needed was the Benny Hill soundtrack to it. It would have made it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but well, yeah, right. That's her my take on it. I think they've got their heads together um, and thought, right, we'll have a ready-made challenger, but I think they're hoping that Jazzy Dickens wins. And then if Jazzy Dickens does win, then they've got a new ready-made challenger with a belt. If he, if Warrington fights the uh, the Chinese fellow, what's his name now? I forgot his name. Kang uh, Zhou. Yeah, right. If right, Warrington beats him. Because if Warrington beats him, then he gets the ring belt as well, doesn't he? So I yeah. think that's what Ross Warrington wants more than anything. At the end of the day, right, if I was a boxer, that's what I'd want more than anything. The ring belt, fuck all the WBC, WBO and all that. The ring belt's the only one that's got any meaning. Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so third air play to Josh Warrington for not fighting him again, because I'd probably do the fucking same. And just right, really I think, but can I just point out that all these people... Who keep going on about? Oh, Josh Warrington's vacated. Josh Warrington's vacated. He shit his pants and filled his nappy. This and that. The game, Josh Warrington, loads of crap, aren't they? And Lewis. Josh Warrington will fight again. He might only have two more, two or three more fights. But they never gave Joe Calzaghe much, as much jip, did they? As much grief when he vacated WBC rather than fighting Carl Froch, who had been parked up a long time waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You never yeah. give Joe Calzaghe any grief, and he went on to fight two more men in the 40s. And yeah, Joe yeah. Calzaghe don't get any grief, does he? But well, they give Carl Froch grief for not fighting James DeGale because he'd gone into the Twitter era. We know Twitter era when Carl Zaghi Froch, 2008. But James DeGale and Carl Froch, when Carl Froch vacated, they give Carl Froch loads of grief, but Carl Froch never fought again. Joe yeah. Calzaghe fought two more times. And Josh Warrington will fight again. And they keep giving him grief. But like I said, they never get Cobra any grief, did they? And he was waiting for... And let me tell you this. He was 30-year-old, 23-0, and 0, 19 by KO, British title outright, and he was icing people. Yeah. And Joe Calzaghe fought Carl Froch or Roy Jones and Hopkins, 40-odd-year-olds. Uh, were a no-brainer for him, wasn't it? But he could have had a big yeah. fight at City Ground, Nottingham. Yeah. yeah. So all you Joe Calzaghe fans... Right. And I'm the biggest when he fucking vacated, eh? 
Right, and I'm the biggest Joe Calzaghe fan, but though personally, Porky, right, I'm glad that they never fought because I think one would have ruined the other, right? Regardless of who would have won, one of them would have ruined the other. They're both legends, so I'm personally, I'm glad they never fought. Well, this is how I look at it, right? Joe Calzaghe were ready for the taking then. I mean, I've gone on record as saying a Pete Frotch and a Pete Calzaghe, I think Calzaghe wins on points. I've Correct. gotten on record as saying that. Yeah, yeah, 2008, yeah. when they should have fought, right, when Frotch fought Pascal, Joe were on the slide then. It were perfect for Carl to fight him. And he yeah. got dropped in his last two fights, so that only proved what I was saying were right. Yeah. He'd have beat him then, but maybe at the peaks, he'd have probably lost on points, you know, probably eight rounds to four. And Carl, Carl probably agrees with me on that, but then he were ready for the taking. But who knows at the peaks, he might have got caught. But when when Hopkins and Jones had him in trouble in the first round, them times they never followed through. The Cobra wouldn't let him off the hook. Beat no, Cobra no, no. at that age, he'd yeah. wrote no. him off. Right, it's all about timing, and yeah, Porky, you're probably right at that time, and that's probably why Calzaghe didn't fight him. Yeah, because that's it, mate. He didn't fight him, but all them people say, "Oh, Porky, Carl Proch vacated, didn't fight the Gale." Do me a favour. He's just wrote Groves off twice. Who beat the Gale? Get a grip. James yeah. DeGale sat on ropes with a cobra. It would have oh. been it would have been like Michael Ma Myers in Halloween, mate. <laughs> massacre. A massacre. Yeah. A massacre. It would have punched him upside down, wrote him off, smashed him to bits. Inside out and back to front. You know that, mate. Smoked <laughs> his boots. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Moving on, Porky. Fury, Joshua. No, I don't want to spend too much time. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. like you, just fucking tell me when the first press conference is on and tell me when the date that it's on. Right. Do you think it's going to happen? No, like, I don't think it happens. Is it overkill, isn't it? Yeah, big time. I'm sick of it big now. Time. And people, and you know what? They're sick of it as well, I'm hearing back, but they've got to keep pushing it forward because they've got TV people behind them. And look, you yeah. know, boxing industry, right? You know what boxing is, right? Boxing is all designed for everybody to fall out who, who, who are involved in it. Fighters, trainers, promoters, managers, cut men, YouTubers like me, other media guys, boxing fans, hardcore fans, casuals. It's all designed for everybody to fall out. And you put it into a mix, you get a rotten stew that, so leaves, that leaves shit an edge at pan. And you know what you do with shit, don't you? You get rid of it because it leaves fucking stains. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's all designed for everybody to fall out. But boxing is subjective. It's everybody's yeah. opinion, isn't it? So-and-so yeah. should be fighting so-and-so and blah, blah, blah. There's only UFC that are putting people in with people at the moment. Yeah. Boxing is not... Well, all we're doing in boxing, we're waiting. Oh, is Fury going to fight Joshua? Is Joshua going to fight Fury? Who's going to win? And on 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 it goes until they go too far. Like Khan Brook. You ask anybody about Khan Brook now, what do they go? Say, what do they say? They go, ship sailed and sunk. It's like warming up a five year, a five, a five day old curry. It's not going to taste nice, is it? Is it? Oh, God, what about that for? Oh, it's no good, mate. It's no good. It's. What do they call it? Over marinated, or it's been overcooked, hasn't it? Yeah, and and really now they're out with begging bowls, aren't they? They all want to come to the table now, don't they? Because they've got nowhere else to go. Brooke and Khan, they want to do it now. But yet they've been back and forward for years playing ego trips. It's another hat and witter. Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bow, Calzaghe Frotch. Won't happen. Yeah, well, if it does happen, I, I'd watch <laughs> it, but I couldn't get behind it. I couldn't yeah. get behind it because it's it, they're both shot to pieces. Yeah. Shot to pieces. Kel Brook, if he gets hit now, what does he do? Turns away. Turns away. Right. Why is that? Because it's yeah. mental, isn't it? Yeah, he's gone. Face is yeah. all right, but he just don't want to go through all that trauma again. Yeah. So how can we get into a fight if Amir Khan catches him with a flurry and he turns away? We're all going to go, oh, we've paid 25 quid for that. Jeez. And it's shit. Eddie Earn, you've ripped us off again. Five days, six, seven days later, it's all forgot about and we're on to the next fight. And the narratives change because Eddie will say to him, don't give this airtime where, where I'm getting hammered. Make sure you disable the comments on YouTube, Coogan. Blah-de-blah, and, and they'll play the media game. 
Yeah. It's a bag of shit. And nobody wants to see it. And I don't want to see it. It's a dog with fleas. It's rotten. <laughs> it's rotten. It's like that case against John Gotti. Rotten. <laughs> Find him not guilty, Your Honour. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Right. But, though, right, if uh, they do fight, I just uh, think it's a piss take, Porky, because at the end of the day, they should have fought years ago. How? Oh, they never don't know, because there was that much money in that fight. How yeah. the fuck? How the fuck? Right. How didn't they fight? Well, they didn't fight because Amir wanted Lion's share, didn't he? That's but though, I think, right, but personally, I think that Amir was entitled to it because he he was the star in the thing. Yeah, but, yeah. Right, I've heard, like, somewhere that Kelbrook turned down two and a half million quid. 2.8 million. Absolutely ridiculous. Kel, if you're listening, you should be ashamed of yourself. But he'll take half of that now, won't you, Kelly? Yeah, correct. <laughs> He's like that with he's like that with bowling and now Oliver Twist. Please, sir, more, more, please, sir, more. It's a bit late in day now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but though, if right, they did fight now. Right, I couldn't see it go more than a couple of rounds. I think Khan will blast yeah, them out. Well, it'll be a, it'll, they'll have a they'll have a they'll have a blast, won't they, for a few rounds, and then they'll be hugging, kissing, middle of the ring, and they'll walk off into the sunset and say that was a job well done. And Eddie Earn will. Paper of it cracks for all the rest of it <laughs> and get all those lot off his back. And then week after, it'll be, I don't know, Digail Groves, two or something, you know, intense beef, or I don't know, laughing lunch and meat, whatever. Yeah. Raw the circle of boxing porky, the circle of bullshit. Yeah, the, cir- the circle of something, isn't it? <laughs> Cow shit. <laughs> Big yeah. shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, right then, go on. Then moving on. Um, right, have we spoke about uh, Billy Joe Saunders and Canelo? Yeah, I think it's a good fight. Uh, I want the Brit guy to win, but if he does, awesome. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I think it, it, Billy's been calling him out for years, Annie and Golovkin, and finally he gets his own way. So I'll believe it when they're in ring. Yeah, yeah. I know that's a bit harsh, yeah. but no, they... no, it's... yeah. True though, me too, Porky, the same though, right? Billy Joe Son is one of the best boxers I've ever seen, but he's talked it that much and he's never ever stepped up to that level, yeah. right? He's lived off the back of that Lemieux fight. And personally, all right, Lemieux's an ex world champion, but right, he's right, he was tailor made for, yeah. for Billy Joe Saunders, so you know what I mean? So, but I'm just glad that he's eventually got this fight. I hope and pray that he punches Canelo in half. But personally, I can't see it. I, I can just see Canelo walking him down and eventually catching him in the last third of the fight. Yeah. But yeah, I, you hope, know. I hope I'm wrong, Porky. I, right, I hope I'm wrong. I'll always back the Brit regardless. And I hope he punch, I hope Billy Joe Saunders punches him upside down. Yeah, I do. But I, 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 I think it's going to be hard for him to... Because when Billy fought at 160, he didn't budge anybody. Now he's yeah. fighting at 168. He couldn't budge that last guy. Oh, he did, but late on, didn't he? Yeah. And Canelo's being hit by Golovkin and Kovalev, two big, biggest punchers of our era, and they couldn't budge him. So yeah. Billy won't be able to budge him, so he's going to have to get on his bike, so he's going to have to be fit, and he's have to come in, do his work, and get gone again. And is he going to get a decision against a super human star in boxing, the world's biggest star in boxing in his Absolutely. own town? No chance. No. In my opinion, there's no way that Billy, right? Even if Billy Joe Saunders wins eight rounds, I don't think it. I don't think he'll get a decision. No. No, there's two. Don't knock him out to win, honey. Definitely, right, right. He's at least got to knock him out to get a draw, Porky. Right. I don't. I, right. I don't even see where he gets the win from. Yeah. Well, I get him one round against Mayweather, and uh, what was that judge called? Now the woman judge. She gave it uh, Adelaide Bird. Yeah. yeah. Was it Adelaide yeah. Bird or was it another woman? Right, it right could have been that Eugenia one. I don't know her surname. Well, it was somebody give it as raw, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, which was absolutely ridiculous. But though the thing about that fight that, no, that nobody else knows is that Mayweather pulled him down from one fifty four to one fifty, knowing that he was tight at the weight. So Mayweather's took four pound off him in weight, knowing that that'll just can sap all his energy. That's so why I said it's an hard fight him, him against Billy at one hundred and sixty pound. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 At one sixty-eight, he's playing into his his yeah hands. Yeah. Yeah. His hands, isn't he? Yeah. So, uh, is that all your questions? Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, right. One more question about uh, Liverpool. Had Callum Smith. Right. Where do you think he goes after the Canelo fight? What do you think happened in the Canelo fight? I think he got injured, didn't he? And he, and he just yeah, tried to get the rounds in and not be stopped. You know, I think his pride kicked in. But you can't fight with one arm, can you? No. 
that that arm hawk, it was absolutely fucking horrific. At the end. It was nearly as big as his old man's left arm, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was massive, lads. Yeah, hey, that rides. But though, you know what I mean, right? For him to even get through that fight with yeah. that injury against a puncher like Canelo, you know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah. Shows he's got a pair of bollocks anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's one of them things, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right then. Is is that your last question? Yeah. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Right. Anyway, all nice right. one. I'll keep it. I'll, uh, I'll keep. I'll keep it going then, because obviously you're a rank amateur, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> right. What did you think about? Uh, what did you think about the the news this week that Eddie Earn's going to start a a match room media arm? Do you think he's playing a bit of chess with Sky, and so they come to the table and give him a better deal because deals up, or do you think he's really moving lock, stock, and two smoking barrels away from Sky, Sky and they're going to do their own thing? What do you think? I don't see them forking out for their own thing, but I don't know. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, right. Um, Eddie Earn's probably had his own. Matchroom media, um, you know what I mean. Anyway, and then now he's just look, he's just looking to get away because I think right, it's inevitable that he moves away from Sky Sports and goes to right his own because I think he'll be his own boss over there and he'll call the shots over there where boxing's concerned. And I think that's what yeah. he wants. Do you think that? Uh, sorry, what do you think will happen to Bean and all the Bean Masons? You know, all that. Yeah, well, right, Bean's uh, right going over to the darts, isn't he? Bean's already planning ahead. He's already jumped on darts. He's a dart commentator now. That's my mate Smido, voice of hardcore darts. Bean's already trying to jump in on Dart Express, isn't it? On our Dart Express train. <laughs> I mean, right. before we know where we are, we're going to see Bean sat next to John Lowe and Eric Bristow, aren't we? In dart oh. matches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As, as, as dart players come out to, uh, to ring. Bean's going to be there saying, welcome to the Blue Dart Division. <laughs> Added spice. Compelling, Bean. You know, so Bean's going to look after himself. <clears throat> look, do you remember about a year ago, I did a video and I said, the title were people jumping off a ship and it said, every man for himself. You remember that video, don't you? Yeah, they do, yeah. Well, that day has come home to roost now. So all yeah, you yeah. people who went, oh, okay, you're making crap up. Well, I weren't, was I? It's every man for themselves now, so watch them squirm. Yeah, yeah, right. But, though, years ago, didn't uh, fucking Bean try and go over to Satanta? Yeah, he did when Dennis had a deal with Satanta. He asked Dennis if he, if he could get him on at Satanta. And uh, I don't, he obviously stayed with Sky, didn't he? But, yeah, if, listen, if things are a bit rocky, Bean will look to jump shit. Listen, mate. Yeah. If it were a world war and we were in trenches and it were a bit easier <laughs> on one side at trench, being a say, look, I'm going to join Germans. He'd join the Germans, <laughs> wouldn't he? <laughs> say, look, mate, they've got pot noodles over there. They're not eating this crap we're eating. I'll see you later, alligator in the swamp. He'd be gone, wouldn't he, Bean? And that'll oh. be it. And and all the rest, I'm not saying all of them, but they're all jostling for position, aren't you? And it's sad to see the rimming that's going on, the pure arse licking. Right, and they're all jostling for position because they're all auditioning to be Eddie's pets when he moves over to obviously Dazone and probably might do something with Matchroom or whatever he's going to do. They're all going to want to be in bed with Eddie Earn, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, what how appealing is that? You know, laying next to a man with a hairy <laughs> back. <laughs> I've heard he has his back waxed, Eddie. You could get Bellew to wax your back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well. <laughs> but uh, all right then. Uh, who do you think's gonna fight Josh Taylor next? Um, Josh Taylor, right? I think Ramirez is gonna fight him. Isn't that pretty much more or less a done deal? Yeah, so they say. Yeah, yeah. But though, great fight. But again, I think he's absolutely tailor made for Josh Taylor. I think very highly Josh Taylor. I think he's a, by far our best boxer, Josh Taylor. Yeah, he's up there, isn't he? With, yeah, with Tyson really, Fury, really isn't harder, harder than a coffin nail. He's got every every move in the boot, mate. Right, that fight against Probray was one of the best fights I've seen for a long time, and I rate that Probray as well very, very highly. I think he's a great fighter. Yeah. What do you think about Joe G's stable not getting slots on Sky? What do you think is going on there, Chris? Tell me what you think. Yeah. Joe's obviously upset someone, hasn't he? Because he's one of them Joe Gallagher. He just speaks his mind on it and he's not yeah. arsed. So basically, he's uh, 
said whatever to whoever, and they thought, right, you're getting throws out, and literally, and that's and that's uh, basically what happens because he's got like Johnson, he's got the Smith brothers, he's got a lot of top fighters, and none of them seem to, well, apart from uh, Callum Smith, none of them seen the fucking light of day for eighteen months, have they? No, and it's uh, it's it's a shame because he's most successful trainer in the last fifteen years, isn't he, Joe Gallagher yeah, in in yeah, UK. Yeah. Big uh, magazine trainer of the year, what five years ago, something like that. 2014, 2015. I thought Peter Fury should have got it, but I think Joe, because uh, Tyson beating Vladimir, yeah, I think yeah. Joe got it for the amount of champions he'd had in that year. Because he, he, he were, the gym went on fire when he like 49 and 0 at one point as a yeah, trainer, yeah, or something, yeah. 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 which were like unheard of, wasn't it? Yeah. So I think I think that uh, he's had a bit of a raw deal. All right, then. Uh, what do you think about? Lewis Ritson leaving Neil Fano. Um, tell you the truth, Porky, I don't know too much about it, but uh, obviously he's moving onwards and upwards. Obviously, he doesn't think that he can go any further with him. So he's just basically yeah. looking after his own career, in my opinion, thinking I'm going to try something new. Yeah, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Only, to, only time will tell. Right, I just hope it goes better for him than it did with Dylan White leaving his trainer. I like Lewis Ritson as well. He's a very nice Polite yeah. kid. He's, he's, he's like 99% of the box. He's very polite and got manners and that, and he installs discipline. And I like I like him, and I, I like his trainer as well. I think it's a shame in that, that they parted, because they had a loss of them too. Well, so, right. Yeah, right. Um, I'm sure he lost for the European title, didn't he lose for the European Yeah, he did. They hadn't, they hadn't had a lot. No, he didn't train him then, did he? Oh, right. So he's uh, his his dad training them, but he's gone back to his dad now because he's homesick. Some from what I've heard, but there's, there's other people saying to me, "No, no, he's had people in his ear, and he's gonna move to a a, a certain trainer, you know, in the next few months." So I don't know. I have a good idea where it might be. It'll be obviously one of the the TV trainers that are on the scene, but they're not gonna knock it back, are they? If they've got somebody doing ten thousand tickets. No, so you can't blame them, but it's the harsh reality and it's a harsh, harsh sport. And I'm very, very critical about it. And I think there needs to be boundaries set with a lot of things in, in boxing because a lot of things that frustrates me and gives me a fucking ulcer. <laughs> but, gives uh, you miles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a nightmare, mate, honestly. But it's the wild, wild west, but... It's every man for themselves when because you, you've only got a short shelf life as a boxer, just like a footballer, aren't you? Um, so trainers can train while they're 60, but boxers can only fight while they're like 34, 35, can't they? Maximum, you know, some go some go above that, but not many statistics prove that. Yeah. But you know, we have to respect Lewis Ritson's decision, but his trainer will, will always be a good trainer and he'll he'll move on. It, it won't bother Neil one iota, but. Yeah. You, know, it, it, you could walk back on it in years to come and think, oh, maybe we, maybe it could have been done a bit better. Or I don't know. It's a harsh sport. It's very harsh to give opinions on it, especially if you if you know if you know people. It's uh, I think it's a, a harsh, harsh sport, and I think that Ritson's probably been torn over it for months. Yeah. Honestly, over what to do because he'll have people in his ear saying you got the decision but you lost that fight you need to sack your trainer who said that to him I don't know but somebody has aren't they that's the harsh let's just cut the, the shit that's the harsh reality somebody's been in here and I personally think that's somebody from Matchroom or Sky that said look if you want to move forward Vlad, but you've got to get rid of that trainer you've already had one loss against that Patero and you've had another one here but you got the decision that you shouldn't have done so I don't know, but Neil Fano didn't train him for that potato fight, but I think that somebody's got to him. I might be wrong. He might just have got up one day and thought, God, I had a lucky decision there. But what he should have done is looked at it as a bad night at office and moved on, but he's probably got up and thought, I had a lucky decision there. That could have gone the other way. I need to get rid of my trainer. He might have thought that, but no, nah, I, th I don't think he's that type of kid. I think somebody's got in his head yeah. and had a word with him, but that's just what goes on. It's the it's the wild wild west, mate. Correct. It's all honour amongst people in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, uh, right. What do you think about Dylan White's new trainer? Apparently, he said he's got a jab as good as Lennox Lewis's. Well, what he's not going to say he's got a jab like Eddie Yates out Coronation Street, is he? <laughs> Roy Cropper. He's got Roy Cropper. Roy Triple Whopper Cropper. <laughs>
Roy Cropper follows me on here, but he's called Roy Triple Whopper Cropper. <laughs> <laughs> the Gareth Davis of acting. <laughs> oh, shocking him, Gareth Davis. I can't see even... that video. Oh, he's fucking. Do you see it? What? Not right. Right. I've not seen it. Didn't they take it down? I did look for it, but I but I really didn't want take to look it down. He was like he was sat. He was like he was sat in York in Edlington. What? What? One Sunday dinner went. Strippers used to came on, sat at front with his part of John Smith. <laughs> oh, I mean, God. come on! What? What were all that about, Gareth Davis? Go on yourself into the nearest law shop. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. If Porky, there's anyone that's ever stole a living out of boxing, it's Gareth A. Davis. Gareth A. Davis, aka the Roy Triple Whopper <laughs> Cropper of boxing. <laughs> Porky, you're killing me, yeah. The <laughs> Buffalo Bill of boxing. <laughs> it's I remember that film, you know, Silence yeah. at Lambs. And it's, there's only one laugh in that film, you know. You know, Silence at Lambs. On the skin. <laughs> I watched it other night, right, and, and, and I watched it, and, and something made me laugh in it. Precious. And it's not one of them films that you want to laugh at, because it's a pretty scary <laughs> film, but when I, re- when I was watching TV, it came up on a sheet of paper, and it's... and. And it, a newspaper clipping, and it said, Bill Skins Fifth, you know, <laughs> Fifth Body. And I was thinking, Gareth A. Davis. <laughs> skins Fifth. <laughs> Gareth A. Davis, Skins Fifth. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's how sick I am. Okay, right. You're only thinking what everybody else is, but at least you've got the yeah, ball. at least I say. Listen, I'm the one that gets shit through my letterbox and bricks through, put through <laughs> car windscreens and all that. I'm willing to take it. We're insured. We've got yeah. a bit of jiff and a mop bucket. We'll be right. Yeah. But right. now... Hey. Right. Right. While you're on the subject, Porky, right, did you send fucking Frank Warren a fish fruit post? No, did I fuck? Who told you? See, that's rumours in boxing. People chat shit all the time, don't they? <laughs> Why well, don't I send Frank a fish for a man? I'll put it in my frying pan and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe rubbish like that. You'll get me a fucking done in off Frank. No, I'll hey, right, end up Frank, feeding me to pigs. Know, and feed me to pigs. I know, yeah, right. Brick top. But it's not Frank that looks like Brick top. It's his brother. Have you seen his brother? It's the fucking double of him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've met his brother a few times, actually. Yeah, he's all right. Bobby, yeah. where he's crumby. Yeah. Know, yeah. Sound that they're all they all sound them, you know, Alfie, all of them. They, yeah, I bet they are right. I bet you they're all a fucking laugh and all you'd have a right night out. Listen, who would you rather have a night out with? Bobby Warren, Alfie Warren, or Eddie Earn and his old man Bazza, aka <laughs> the godfather. <laughs> you'd rather have a night out with them because you don't know where your night out with them is gonna end up. You could end up on a plane to an island somewhere. <laughs> Fuck, you're killing me, lad. Fucking hell. Oh, you know, you know, you know. Correct, lad, correct. So, all right, then. Well, listen, it's been great to have you on. Let's have a look. Uh, we've had a good half an hour chat. Thanks for coming on, Chris. Uh, yeah. We'll have to do it again sometime. All right, you've, we've had a bit of a laugh, haven't we? Most we have. Most we have. Uh, all the best to you and your family, mate. And we will speak again. And I'll put, I'll get this out for... I'll get it out after Terry's one tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, it'll be about one o'clock. No problem. Cheers, about that. Appreciate it, mate. Keep moving forward, lad. All Thank the best. Thank you very much for coming on. And what team are you with, Liverpool or Everton? You mean Liverpool? The one yesterday, kid. You fucking know. You know. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. Yeah, we can't. Uh, we can't keep having teenagers though at centre half, can we? Jesus. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. But, hey, listen, right. Money, don't we? we can't moan. We won the league last year, so Porky, we can't moan, can we? Yeah, yeah. Big shout out to my pal Ian Snowden as well, who's ambassador at Everton Football Club. He's, he got a winner's medal at Everton, you know, in the 80s. Ian, I know you're watching. You need to come on my channel. Forget that you do a podcast with Tony Bell. You'll come on my channel, somebody you grew up with. All right. Peace Cheers, Porky. All the best, lad. Cheers, mate. Bye. Well, to mate.